right. On that note, I have a poem I'd like to read, but now I can't because I got the camera on. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Let's see if I can remember. Let's see if I can remember the poem. Oh, I gotta take these off so I look cooler. I'm still wearing my motorcycle jacket because it makes me look cooler. I peacock because I'm a sexual being and I like to show off my colors. Which brings me to the thing I want to bitch about in a second. Not bitch about, examine for everyone's benefit. It's especially particularly mine. turnaround from this morning when I was all depressed just staring at the ceiling for 30 minutes. What got me out of bed? Coffee. If I'm being honest, coffee got me out of bed. No, I didn't. What actually got me out of bed? I actually had an abundance of energy to do stuff. What got me out of bed was during my meditation, I started, uh, I just suddenly got this uh, invitation to remember the beauty of this woman from my dream. Look at that, it popped right off. <laughs> Cheap cigar. It still tastes great, though. That's right. My sexuality got me out of bed. That's what I did. Instead of running around thinking about reasons to get out of bed, My, my sexual impulse and uh, suddenly it brought me color in life and got me out of bed which brings me to the thing I'm going to talk about which is sexuality is inherent in nature and fundamental to it especially as, at least as a human being but actually most things in nature including flowers and trees everything is sexual everything is sexual and I will not stop and change my opinion of that because of some arrogant woman who is in denial about it, of her sexuality, or thinks that I need to tone it down, as if I can change the very nature of my existence for someone else. I had, I had a short date today, okay? I had a very short date. It lasted, I don't even think it lasted 15 minutes. The whole experience did last, but the actual sit down and talking, that only lasted about 10 minutes, I think. Less honestly, is this thing on? All right, I hate it when it's not on. You waste all this time talking, barf, barfing on camera, and I don't even get to see it later. I wish I could make this taller. No, I can't. I can't. We go brace in different angle. Brace. Oh, a brace. A brace will work. A brace will work. object. This is good for now. Yeah, okay. Damn. That jacket's really comfy, actually. Okay, I see why you spend you spend a few more dollars and you get something nice, kind of like milk, cheap milk. Is a, it's all right. And then you buy the organic grass-fed milk. Woo! You can taste the grass in your coffee. You can literally taste the grassiness and the real stuff fed to the cows and what it produced. You can taste the bitter milk. That really should be common sense, right? But I'm telling you now. I'm talking to Moo because I got rejected. rejected for being myself though so I have no regrets
sign there's a lot of wind. <laughs> That's why you get a torch, by the way. Here, Mr. Tree, help me out. Oh, good. Somebody carved a heart into the tree. That's good. Yeah, you hurt the tree. attracted to me clearly which is the irony of this uh, I told her I got banned from a yoga studio it turns out she runs her own yoga business right? do it yourself she teaches, she's a yoga teacher but she doesn't have a studio she goes to their house or they come over to whatever yeah cool right? all right well, we're looking for a few other things and psychic ability and whatnot fundamentally differ. <laughs> then I had to explain to her that it has been a life in a nutshell. It's been a lifelong journey of me overcoming my deep sexual repression and withholding my sexual energy and how sexual energy is fundamental. It's the fundamental life force and the creative force. You know, it's not everything, but everything in nature is primarily fundamentally sexual. That's, there's nothing wrong with this. It doesn't mean that it's all about sex. Maybe that's what she thought I meant, but I gave her credit that she was much more aware and smarter than that. I think she is. Oh my god. If, it, if this were not the case, why would longhorns in the wild go out and bash their horns together? Actually, I don't think, I don't know if longhorns are animals with horns. And she said, not everything's sexual. She, uh, a flower. I said, a flower is sexual. A flower has a bright color, like a fuchsia color, to attract bees. Bees then come and pollinate it so we can reproduce. That's sexual. The entire nature of the flower's existence and its color, yes, it's beautiful, but it's sexual. Beauty is actually derivative of sexuality. We find things beautiful because of their sexual nature. She said, this red car. She kept trying to prove me wrong. This red car. Red this car. Look at the contours. I said, 
contours of this car are sexual. The design and aesthetic of this car are primarily integrated with the human fundamental sexuality. That's just why we made the car this shape and this color. She said, well, you don't know that. This person went and got this car. Maybe it was just a hand-me-down for the grandmother. It has no sexual value. I was about to explain how the aesthetic of the car originally is based on human sexuality because our beauty is based on human sexuality. But I didn't get that far. You know, if, if dolphins looked at us, they might... By the way, dolphins actually rape human humans, men and women. <laughs> by the way, uh, dolphins actually do that. Or, sorry, the lingo is sexually attacked. Dolphins uh, can feel that sexual energy with humans. All mammals can feel that energy with each other, which is another interesting thing. Uh, neither here nor there. Well, no, it is here nor there. That's what I mentioned. So, oh, okay, her last attempt, this brick wall, which is ironic, right? This brick wall. This brick wall. This brick wall. And a part of me thought, okay, I will admit to her now I'm being somewhat facetious because she's challenging me and I'm just trying to get pokers. You know, I'm trying to trigger her. I don't realize that that's what I'm doing. But And then, uh, I, but you know, it, it's the truth. I say, well, this brick wall, this brick wall is sexual. It was built by men who had sexual energy and life force and they put all of their sexual frustration and life force into the brick walls. They built it. Otherwise it wouldn't have been built. There was a pause just like that. And then she said, I don't feel like explaining anything to you. And I walked away. And I laughed my ass off. It hurts a little bit, but I'm really glad it didn't work out because the manipulativeness, the testiness, which she admitted was her trying to protect herself. What I never got to ask her is, why do you feel the need to protect yourself? Why not just be open and honest and perfectly put your heart on the line and risk it being broken open? Risking heartbreak and risking loss. She said, it's not testing this, it's just confidence. No, real confidence would be, I'm going to be open, honest, and genuine and allow myself the risk of being taken advantage of or broken, or broken or getting invested and then having this not work out.
the stamping, so she went up, she said that too. She subtly implied, she said, just because two people have a connection doesn't even mean they're going to like each other. I said, right, I don't even like you in particular either. And I was kind of kidding. And then she said, oh, I hate you. <laughs> oh, great, we're off to a good start. This woman hates me already. Okay, well, there's a reason for that. I don't hate her, but now I realize why I'm feeling this hostility. She hates me. All this protectiveness. This was why uh, it didn't work out well in my life. I'm trying to protect her heart. She even admitted it to me. I'm trying to protect yourself. Everyone's trying to protect themselves. I'm not trying to protect myself. That's why I went on this stupid thing. I already knew how it ended. She's practically all but said she was out the door already. Okay. But you had to try. Because trying is better than sitting at home being depressed in bed. Now I'm not depressed. I got a little angry after that happened. After I got done laughing, as I realized how she was full of shit and how arrogant she was being. But which brings me to now I see the difference between cocky and arrogant. I'm cocky. Cocky is light, playful, funny. It is sort of a self confidence, whereas arrogance is putting the other person down to elevate yourself. Cockiness is the other way around. Cockiness is a glorification of your own abilities. Right? Cockiness is usually funny. It's, it should be funny, it should lighten the mood. Like I could say, oh man, I'll tell you what, I could definitely go all that. I could definitely take you to places you've never been. Arrogance would be like, there's no way you could keep up with me. Or, uh, you know, you better go grab your marker before I get out of here. I only got five minutes. I don't got any time to wait. I don't normally talk to strangers, but I'll entertain you for a second. Yeah, I mean, that's cold. <laughs> it's nasty. I fell for it. Hold on, sing here. And she said, okay, let's go walk and talk. I said, great. She walks into a coffee shop and then gives her mind and gives him my name and expects me to pay for her. I was already gonna pay for her, but then I kinda saw that she didn't even offer her enough. You know, I, I don't know. If a woman offers to pay for me, that's a that's a really green flag. Or if she turns to me and says, Hey, you want to smoke this? That's a woman you that's a keeper. First date, a woman turns to you and actually communicates with you and says, Hey, you want to split this? Yes. Perfect. Now we're equals. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Look no further. That's it. Hey, you want to split this? Oh. Hey, I'm going to. You want to get out of here and go to my place and go to your plate? Yes. Yes. Okay. Honesty. Some honesty. That's what I'm looking for. Man, I've been wanting to show you this. It just deletes itself after I'm done passing over. Talking. 
if it weren't for the baseline fundamental sexual connection. So she's in denial, the irony. The fundamental premise we're even talking. Granted, there was clearly a connection that went beyond that, far beyond that, but she couldn't stand me because I don't know, I'm, I'm too real. And that's always my problem. Just like that Bluebird poem by Tchaikovsky, Charles Bukowski. There's a bluebird in my heart. It wants to get out, but I don't let him out. I don't let him see. I keep him in there. I keep him in there and I say, I say, you stay in there now, Bluebird. You stay in there now. Let your heart sing. It's gonna be the title of this video. Let your heart sing. Let your heart out. Let your heart sing, and you will never have regrets. That is the only way to live. Don't you protect that motherfucker. You let it. You let it sing. You let it out. You let your heart sing. That's the only way to live. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We'll see how far that gets you. 